Hey everybody, it's Glenn, back in this video with a trio of Hulk Hogan action figures ready to battle it out in a comparison to decide which one is the best. So what you gonna do when Hulkamania runs wild on you? You know how these comparisons work, we're gonna take a look at the various aspects of each action figure, comparing sculpt, deco, accessories, articulation, and as each of these carry a different price tag, let's also factor in bang for your buck. And in that regard, weighing in at 10.99, we have a basic WrestleMania Heritage Series Hulk Hogan. And as we look at the card back, he's representing WrestleMania 2 when he faced King Kong Bundy within the confines of a 15-foot high steel cage. Then at 17.99, it's a modern Hulk Hogan from Series 34 of the Elite Collection, rendered just how he might wander onto Raw today. And finally, tipping the scales at a whopping 22.99, it's the defining moments. Hulk Hogan. Looking at the packaging back, you can pause now to read that at your own leisure, but the defining moment being represented here is Hogan facing Andre the Giant at the record-breaking third WrestleMania in 1987. And at least when it comes to packaging, this one wins hands down. It incorporates Hogan's ripped t-shirt into the design, and to appeal to the mint on card crowd, the ripped t-shirt is a window through which you can admire the figure without having to set him loose from the packaging, which of course is what I'm about to do. Here they all are out of packaging, basic on the left, elite in the middle, and defining moments on the right. Basic is, as the name suggests, just that, so unlike the other two not loaded with accessories, bare bones with just the signature red knee pads. Yet even here, compared to the defining moments one, we can see the basic knee pads lack the paint application that the defining moments one has. Of all these, the defining moments one was the first to be released, and with Mattel picking up the WWE action figure license in 2010, five years of anticipation that have passed since, combined with Hogan likely being the all-time biggest name in wrestling, and that's how Mattel can justify the price tag for their very first Hulk Hogan. But here I'm paying close attention to how the accessories stack up against the elite modern Hogan to see if the defining moments one does earn its bigger price tag. Looking closely at the elite and the black trousers are a bit disappointing. On the packaging back he was sporting flashier red and yellow tie-dye wear. I'd have preferred to see the figure rendered in those, but then I'm sure Mattel would have whined about how expensive that deco would be to do. My heart breaks for them. And further still, they cheaped out even more as I noticed the hole in the back pocket. That results from this lower half being reused from the earlier Elite Luke Harper. On him, into that hole, a bandana was glued in there, yet now leaves Hogan looking like someone took a shotgun to his buttock. The Hulk Rules shirt is classic and plucks at the heartstrings of nostalgia, but he does come with a second shirt also. Initially, I didn't think I'd like it as much, but placed on it matches his pandana and looks pretty sweet. Let's place on his feather boa. It's good that Hogan, along with strippers and drag queens, all do their bit to help out feather boa manufacturing. <laughs> I like the red accent on the tips of the feathers. It's a nice touch. I wouldn't be surprised if this boa at some point makes a reappearance in black and white NWO colors. Then the sunglasses are removable. Be careful though, they are itty bitty. I can see many being lost to mum doing the vacuuming. Then the bandana is actually part of the head scarf and isn't removable. Moving on to the accessories of the defining moments, Hogan, it comes with the old WWE Heavyweight Championship, fastens in the back. Boy, is it as ugly as hell. Not Mattel's fault though, that's the design of the belt, so calling the accessory ugly, really, that's a compliment, I suppose. Means they captured it, right? I think it was soon after Hogan defeated Andre at WrestleMania that this belt was retired and we got the prettier wing design that we're probably all familiar with. Then we have the crucifix, which in the build up to their WrestleMania showdown, Andre famously ripped off from around Hogan's neck. Much to the disgust of Vince McMahon on commentary, who acted like Andre had just killed Hogan's mother. And the t-shirt this one is sporting is split down the middle to mimic Hogan ripping off his shirt, as he famously does prior to every match. His hands are sculpted to grasp the shirt, pulling it apart, but as the elbows are single jointed, it's really difficult to get enough bend in them to get him into any kind of dynamic shirt ripping pose. So the idea is good in theory, just not in practice. And with coughing up above and beyond the price of Elite, it would have been good of Mattel to have added double jointed elbows, just something a bit more special that earns the price tag, because as it is, I feel like I've coughed up that much more for just fancy 
Alexia packaging. The crooked headband bugs me too. I know he wore it crooked like that for a time. I'd have just preferred to have seen a straight one as on the side of the packaging. That's just my personal preference and you're probably saying if it bugs you that much, Glenn, just remove it. The problem is once removed, it leaves holes in the side of his head where the headband plugs into and a telltale sign that it shares the same head scope with the basic one is that it also has those same holes, even though, of course, it comes without a headband. Now, while we're looking real close, let's talk likeness. And for me, the likeness of the Elite Hogan is best. The other two just seem slightly off. Yeah, I do appreciate the moustaches and eyebrows of those. They have a sandy blonde deco that makes them much more naturalistic than the Elite one. Plus, they don't shy away from capturing Hogan's scullet lined up and shirtless, and is it me or does modern Hogan's physique seem more aged? It should, and I don't know if this is Mattel's attention to detail or me projecting it on, but it seems like the pecs aren't quite as big, right? Of all of them, I'd say most ripped goes to the basic figure, putting the Hulk in Hulk Hogan. Seems with all of them, though, Mattel have shied away from Hogan's mahogany wood-stained tan, and I think all would have benefited from the skin tones being a shade darker. Now looking at articulation, and this is where a basic figure just doesn't cut it for me. At the hips, the legs move forward and back. Okay for kicking a ball, I suppose, but if you want any pose destined less for the soccer pitch and more for the squared circle, you'd need to invest in one of the other two. They have a great range of articulation at the hips, plus the basic one has no ab crunch, whereas the other two do. Moving this far forward, and this far back. So, which one do I think is best? It's me! Oh, 1991's Hasbro Hulk Hogan. You know, the nostalgia of a toy you played with as a kid can count for a lot. And here, Hasbro sure didn't shy away from making him a shade of Oompa Loompa. But settle down, Hasbro Hulk Hogan, I'm looking from a collector's perspective, and for that, you just don't cut it. And also, just on principle, I have to eliminate the basic Hulk Hogan, just because I require more articulation than it offers. With the elite and defining moments, it's close. The inflated price tag of the defining moments one makes me resent it a little, so I'm going with the modern elite Hulk Hogan from series 34. But really, in my mind, I have the picture of the perfect Hulk Hogan action figure, and none of these quite match up to it. Perhaps among them you could take parts from each and achieve my mental image. It's just five years has been a long time waiting. I've collected a lot of Mattel's WWE legends in that time, and when it comes to the biggest legend of all time, I want the perfect version to lord over them all. I may still yet get it. Now Mattel can, I think we're gonna see a steady stream of Hulk Hogan's, and I'll cross my fingers, one of them meets my expectations. Anyway, Anyway, pipe up in the comments and let me know what you guys think. Click the video on the right for a doink comparison, Mattel vs Jax. As ever, I sure would appreciate it if you could give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I hope to see you next time. Mm.